Tide, Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii, on Monday, August 29th, 2022. Anybody thinking about what you want to be when you grow up? Hopefully we have some young people in the audience or people who coach young people about what they're going to do, because we have great news for you. As of midnight, this Wednesday night, the Oahu's coal burning plant, which produces 20% of Oahu's electricity, is going down forever. We have a big funeral service planned for it. Now, what in the world do we do for electricity if 20% of our source goes away? Well, answer in the short run is Hawaiian Electric is going to have to power up a whole bunch of uh, diesel burning little mini power plants. But this gives us the impetus to, number one, bring on a whole lot more solar panels with battery storage, more wind energy, and from my standpoint, efficiency, 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 do more with less. And what is our new power plant eventually going to look like? Not anything concrete. It's going to be a jillion little solar panels from some of you have solar panels on your roofs, hopefully with battery storage. You are going to become suppliers to Hawaiian Electric because the whole system is going to be integrated all the way down to more and more of you are buying electric vehicles. That big battery in your electric vehicle can be a power source for Hawaiian Electric. Everybody's going to be uh, entering into agreement with Hawaiian Electric. Yes, you can uh, draw from my power source for a limited amount of time. There's going to be this incredible interconnection between the big solar, the little solar, everybody. And you can say, that sounds pretty gosh darn sophisticated. You're right. It is very sophisticated. And it's going to lead to a whole lot of good paying jobs. Generally speaking, the higher your skill level, the better your pay and the more contribution you make to Hawaiian society and our goal of 100% clean energy by 2045. What does that all have to do with our honorable guest this morning, Nicolette Vanderlee, Dr. Congratulations, Dr. Dr. Nicolette Vanderlee, the program manager for HANA Career Pathways coming to us all the way from Kahului, Maui. Uh, she works on the Maui community. No, it's no longer community camp college. It's Maui College. And incidentally, it is 100% clean energy powered is that campus. So another congratulations, Dr. Nicolette. Nicolette specializes in training young people for, I wouldn't say lucrative jobs, this very good jobs provides the skills that they are needed. And today she'll be focusing on the green skills that we are going to increasingly need in the near future. So welcome, welcome. Dr. Vanderlee, and please introduce yourself. Thank you so much for having me, Howard. Uh, it's great to be here. Uh, yes, I'm a program manager at the University of Hawaii Community College's Office of the Vice President. Um, and we are coordinating a statewide project called HANA Career Pathways, which was developed by the Hawaii for Workforce Development Council, UH, and many other partners. And it's building on the momentum of statewide industry, workforce development, and educational planning to support a thriving, diverse, and resilient Hawaii. Um, the project is seeking to increase employment pathways to three of our most in-demand living wage job sectors, including healthcare, technology, and the skilled trades, which does encompass clean energy. So, you know, the needs that you've identified, um, Howard, what we've learned from our industry partners is 
there's going to be hundreds and hundreds of new jobs needed to support our transition to clean energy throughout the state. And those jobs are going to be very diverse, including licensed electricians, carpenters, masons, um, as well as you know the engineers to design the systems, the technicians to maintain them. Um, and also thinking about um, the IT sector, we'll need those data um, analysts and um, you know, all of the IT expertise to maintain those systems. So this project um, is exciting because it's seeking to reimagine what the workforce preparation can be. And it's actually through the Hawaiian concept of HANA, translating as work with that significance in Hawaiian culture as the act of breathing and unleashing grace to improve the world through one's work. Um, you know, the, the fundamental uh, components that we're really focusing on are offering short-term trainings that can lead to industry-valued credentials um, and thinking about what those pathways can be towards in-demand living wage jobs. As we know, the cost of living is so high in Hawaii. Um, we can also support pathways into apprenticeship um, throughout the state and develop um, post-apprenticeship career pathways and advancement opportunities. Wow, that's pretty darn uh, comprehensive. I, I like that phrase, living wage jobs, because you read about in the real estate industry, the average home, single family home in Hawaii is now valued at a million dollars. And then you read about employers or workers in Waikiki earning, they go from $11 an hour to $12 an hour to $13, $14 an hour. Oh my goodness. That'll certainly get them a million dollar home, won't it? No. <laughs> so uh, a lip, that phrase living wage jobs is, is very apropos. Also, I've been around for a while and we politicians have been talking about getting our economy off of the total dependence on tourism and that is exactly, Doctor, what you are doing in, in providing this training. Yeah, one of the goals of the project, um, as it is funded by a $13.3 million grant from the Federal Department of Education, um, is to support the state of Hawaii to recover from the negative impacts of the pandemic. You know, we had so many residents that were furloughed and underemployed during the pandemic. And then, of course, we have many residents as well that they're working two or three jobs, you know, just to pay their bills. And so what are those um, in-demand career pathways that can lead to a living wage? You know, one example in the skilled trades would be uh, the carpenter pathway. So one of the trainings that we have um, developed in partnership with um, the Hawaii's, Hawaii Carpenter Apprenticeship and Training Fund is a pre-apprenticeship for carpentry. Um, that's offered through Honolulu Community College, as well as Maui Community College, and we, Maui College, and we're also developing it on other islands, Kauai and Hawaii as well, so that um, it has statewide potential. And the idea here is that um, participants can enter an eight-week training program um, as a pre-apprentice, and they get all of the fundamental skills and introduction um, for the carpenter apprenticeship pathway. And um, as part of that, they also have a two-week paid internship. So we've embedded that kind of work-based learning so that they really get hands-on experience at a job site. Uh, and then students that complete that program are then offered direct entry into the registered apprenticeship program. So it's a really exciting fast-track way for young people or those interested in making a career change uh, can pursue that uh, carpenter pathway, which does lead to, you know, advancing wages uh, as you work towards becoming a journey worker carpenter um, as well, which is exciting. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, I, I wish we kids had these types of opportunities uh, 20, 30 years ago. We might not be losing a population then. And I think so much is about raising the awareness of the opportunities in the skilled trades, for example, as well as, mm -hmm. you know, the growing sector of IT. Um, you know, the data indicates that around 50% of our high school graduates are not immediately going on to post-secondary education. Um, so sharing and highlighting these opportunities 
where we also have 100% tuition support. So most of our programs are actually free trainings and that covers the cost of the training, things like the paid internship. And then many of the trainings also include industry certifications. So for example, in the IT sector, um, we have trainings like um, AWS Cloud Foundations or CompTIA Security Plus or Network Plus offered through Honolulu Community College. And the cost of the training includes that exam preparation course, as well as books and um, makes the exam itself free. So removing that um, barrier of cost uh, is, a, is a great opportunity through these grant programs. And then a backdrop to that would be we read more and more and more about really burdensome student debt. And people are just, they and their parents are wondering, how in the world are we going to pay all this debt? And, and you have provided a, a beautiful alternate path here. Absolutely. And, you know, for some, for some, it may be the challenge of even just starting, you know, it can be overwhelming to think about applying for college and what that potential student debt load might be. So uh, a program like Hana Career Pathways is offering that fast track um, training opportunity. Most of the trainings can be completed between six weeks to 16 weeks. Um, and, and at that point in time, the program also offers wraparound services so that we can help provide um, other resources and advisory services to students want to now enter the, the workforce. What are the job opportunities and what employers could we connect them with? Um, if they're interested in continuing their education, you know, we see students get really excited when they, you know, come into the college experience. They may now want to pursue a two or four year degree. Um, and so we can also uh, support them in exploring those opportunities. And uh, many of our trainings will have articulation into a degree program. So something like a, uh, you know, short-term training can actually be worth uh, about three credits towards a degree program that they could then begin. And our grant can also fund pathway advancement support. So we can provide up to $2,000 for students that then enter uh, some of these degree pathways. That is quite a contrast to parents paying up to, I think it's $40,000 a year for a full-on private university education. And that reminds me of a personal experience. Uh, I was engaged for some years to an electrical engineer, a very, very successful electrical engineer. And one reason she was successful is when she went onto the job site that where the tradesmen were installing, according to her design, she could point to something and say, this is wrong, this is wrong. And yeah, there's these tough guys that are looking at her, hey, who's this Wayne telling us this is wrong? And she stood her ground and she knew exactly what she was talking about, why she is from Poland and the way you trained electrical engineers in Poland was you did your academic work during the school year and you were required to go into an electrical workshop each summer and do the hands-on electrical work and it really really helped her with with her uh, EE career. Absolutely having that um, hands-on training experience you know that's a core part of our state's apprenticeship programs um, and, you know, young people that may not be aware that, hey, that's a, a living wage pathway for me, uh, the programs that we're highlighting uh, can introduce and connect our students with these opportunities. So you mentioned uh, carpentry. What, what else uh, relevant to green jobs might, might you be offering there? Um, it, one exciting thing I also wanted to share is that there's another new grant that has been awarded to University of Hawaii Community Colleges, and it's actually uh, in partnership with many uh, industry sectors, including a focus on clean energy with the Hawaii um, Office of, of uh, Energy. And so um, in that sector, um, that office will be leading a convening of all of uh, the local employers uh, related to clean energy. And this will enable employers to give that direct input on what are the most needed trainings to support uh, the growth of clean energy. 
Um, and so through that new project, which is called uh, Good Jobs Challenge Resilient Hawaii, um, this project will enable us to extend the work that uh, HANA Career Pathways has begun and continue to develop new trainings, um, particularly in this clean energy sector. So, you know, some of the trainings that we could anticipate, um, Howard, could be um, PV installation and battery-based systems design, for example, um, could also include things like uh, solar safety trainings that would be the equivalent of an OSHA 10, but in the uh, clean energy sector. Uh, and in the past, Maui College has actually worked with Solar Energy International to source that curriculum that is really a, a global standard leading to uh, certifications in the solar industry. So we're looking to be able to adapt um, those types of trainings into the context of, of Hawaii and really customize and tailor that to what are the needs of our uh, local employers so that we can prepare uh, these future workers uh, to bring our vision of clean energy uh, to the state. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's wonderful. And to my knowledge, every time solar panels are installed, be it on a single family residence or in a great big solar farm, it must be accompanied by an equivalent amount of storage, of battery storage. These are batteries that look kind of like air refrigerators. And what happens in Hawaii is we have such beautiful sunshine and we have so many solar panels out there that when the solar energy is produced in the middle of the day, we have no use for the majority of it. So we are now storing that excess energy in solar panels and using it in the evening. Just when the sun is going down, the demand for electricity goes up. Why everybody's coming home from school, from work, all the tourists are coming back from the beach, from tours, whatever, and the demand for electricity just goes up, just skyrockets. So those batteries that are stored in the middle of the day are taking care of a lot of that uh, load. So that adds to the sophistication of uh, so solar uh, installation. And if you're gonna be doing this, you had darn well better understand how electricity works. Absolutely. You know, it's really going to be a diverse skill set um, mm -hmm. across many occupations throughout the state that will be needed to bring this vision, um, you know, to fruition. So, you know, we're excited to be able to have these funding resources, HANA Career mm -hmm. Pathways, and the Resilient Hawaii Good Jobs Challenge Grant to be able to support, um, you know, really a rapid response to what are our local training needs and how can the community colleges and UH be able to respond to that. Wow, I like that phrase, rapid response. Government is generally not known for its rapid response capabilities, but you're, uh, you're bringing it to, to the fore. And just incidentally, the island of Kauai, some days can shut down its fuel fired power plants because they're getting so much clean energy and they're still able to store what they have to store and just run on clean energy for some hours of the day. So the dream of 100% clean energy is, is coming upon us. Absolutely. And, you know, it'll be also that mix that's needed to support that. So solar, wind, um, are there opportunities for biofuels as well? Um, you know, Hawaii has that opportunity to be a model for the world um, as we're addressing all of the pressing challenges of climate change, uh, and the need to develop more efficient and resilient systems. Glad you mentioned the word uh, biofuels. I just had the privilege of touring Honolulu Harbor and the technicians were showing us how all this stuff comes in, how it's sorted and all the stuff that goes out and a major, major customer there at the Honolulu waterfront is Pacific Biodiesel. They make diesel fuel from plants, generally on the big island, and then they put it in great big containers and uh, ship it over here. And then the empty containers have to go back again. So it's already a major component and they, hopefully it's gonna be growing. And here, here's another skill set that's needed. 
Yeah, it's really interesting to also consider how agriculture is part of that, you know, design and development of clean energy. So here on Maui, uh, we've seen the sunflower fields of mm -hmm. Pacific biodiesel, you know, growing and thriving. Uh, so it's really fascinating to see how we can have local inputs that can contribute um, to those new types of models. And a subset of that is when we try to find a land for a new solar farm, being you know acres and acres of solar panels, we say, oh, there's that ag land. And the farmers say, no, 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 we need that to grow crops. So a subset of this is finding those crops that can grow nicely under the partial sun so that you have the panels mounted, say, eight feet up, and then you space it such as your machinery and your people can get under that, and the crops that grow are partially shaded. Which crops grow best? So that, that's, that's another little scientific uh, subset go, going on here. Yeah, it would be really fascinating to see, you know, different pilot projects uh, throughout the islands that could be exploring these different types of technologies. Uh, you know, also considering the importance of preserving our watershed and natural resources throughout the islands. You know, are there ways to integrate the solar farms that are actually, you know, designed within a broader scope of, uh, you know, protecting our, uh, our native forests, um, looking at ways to um, more carefully manage, you know, potential impact of flood uh, during climate change. You know, how do the systems integrate within the landscape as well? I think these are going to be, you know, really interesting initiatives to see um, going forward as the transition to clean energy takes place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, very exciting stuff. So we've just got a few minutes left here. Let's see, we've done carpenters, electricians, oh, computer scientists. We're getting, you know, this is really going to be intricate stuff where we're Hawaiian Electric and the other utilities are drawing power from individual homes that are producing. And they're using that power as they need it, just second by second. And that's going to require some really, really intricate uh, knowledge, knowledge and skills. So how about uh, computer science, things like that, uh, to get, get things going on that way? Yeah, as part of our HANA Career Pathways project, as well as the new Resilient Hawaii Good Jobs Challenge initiative, um, we will be partnered with the Chamber of Commerce Hawaii as a convener for the technology sector. Mm -hmm. uh, and so our local employers in the technology sector that need computer scientists, programmers, analysts, technicians, you know, the full gamut of um, occupational needs will again be able to have that input um, through Chamber of Commerce Hawaii's convening um, and be able to design, you know, what are those jobs of the future? Um, you know, there's certainly uh, needs now in the IT sector for local jobs um, and the pathways to those, you know, may require having on the job training, are there apprenticeship opportunities that could be developed in the technology sector so that our young people can learn from uh, you know, seasoned professionals and not have to leave the islands mm -hmm. to get that kind of education? Um, so it's exciting to see how we can you know, develop our local capacity for technology, um, skills, education, and career pathways, and you know, keep our young people in the islands to um, share all of the, you know, human capital and the capacity that we have to problem solve um, with clean energy, you know, is going to be one of our key activities. Mm -hmm. You know, this reminds me of young people who want to become uh, doctors. They just don't get their degree and march off to a hospital room and start operating. They have to go through their internship and then and their residency. And it sounds like you are promoting a, a version of the same thing. You become more and more and more skilled under the, the mentorship of people who are in the field. I think that's absolutely one of the opportunities. Um, and, you know, University of Hawaii participates in the P20 partnership, which is really looking at educational pathways from, you know, preschool all the way to post-secondary. 
Um, so partnering with our local high schools into the community colleges and the four year universities, you know, that's the pathway approach so that we can help students find their passion, um, you know, make an informed decision about what education they would like to pursue. Um, and then be able to provide that uh, locally through all of our collaborative resources uh, between the colleges, as well as our uh, workforce and industry partners. Wow, that is exciting stuff, doctor. Um, you know, when I was a kid, maybe even when you at your youth or you were a kid, it was kind of assumed that we were headed for a college. And we have since learned the hard way that not everybody is headed for college. And if you can make this plain to even middle school students, you know, maybe you want to go over in this direction and here's get, get a little taste of this, get a little taste of that. Find out what, uh, what uh, instills your, your passion. And, and sounds like you're doing exactly that. Yeah, there, I think there's so many diverse experiences available for our, our local students, um, you know, exploring apprenticeship opportunities, um, you know, looking at, a, at an internship as a way to explore if that's the right career pathway for you, um, earning a, you know, a fast track industry certification that can immediately give you some qualifications to pursue a career, uh, and then always knowing that you have that option to come back to college or come to college and pursue the degree that's also going to help you advance and increase your living wage, you know, capacity. Um, you know, for me, it's all about sharing those opportunities with our students uh, and making our, our resources um, easy to find and easy to share. Um, so I'd like to also um, direct people to our website. Um, if we could bring up our final slide um, as a way to uh, explore the trainings that we do have available through the HANA Career Pathways Project, uhcc.hawaii.edu slash training. Um, we'll get you right to uh, the different trainings that we do have available. So for example, the Carpenter Pre-Apprenticeship Program that's offered uh, starting this October at uh, Honolulu Community College, um, as well as many other uh, trainings like IT that I mentioned as well. So welcome people to explore that website. Uh, and also reach out to me if they have any uh, follow-up mm -hmm. questions, have my uh, email and contact information here. Wow, that is totally, totally wonderful. Uh, I, looking back at my high school experience, I wish that my I and my high school buddies had this type of uh, choice. So that's just really, really good news, uh, doctor. And we have come to a close. Uh, we must bid fond adieu. Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii, Dr. Nicolette Vanderlee, thank you so much. You are just making Hawaii a wonderful, wonderful place. So we need to bid fond aloha to all. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.